today I'm going to be speaking about what you as an individual can do to prepare for end of financial year. So firstly, we're going to touch on income. We'll start with salary and wages. So in the past, you'd have to request or receive from your employer a PAYG summary or group certificate. Now, there's no longer a requirement to do this, and this started at the end of last financial year. Now, your employer has the obligation to lodge everything uh, through what's called single touch payroll or STP. And once they lodge the STP finalization, all that information regarding your salary and wages will be available on the ATO portal, and we will have access to that. So in regards to that, you don't need to do anything there. Um, you just have to rely on your employer. Next, I'll speak about shares and securities. So similar to salary, um, your dividend information should already be available on the ATO portal. Um, this, of course, is only possible if you've notified your relevant share registry of your TFN. So you, you can do this, you can log on to your share registry, such as computer share or linked, and, um, and you can notify your TFN there. If, if you haven't already done so, I would recommend doing that. Therefore, you wouldn't have to be gathering all the dividend information every financial year to be provided to us. Um, now, unfortunately, if you've made some share or security sales, um, you will need to go and collect uh, purchase and sales contracts um, to assist us in determining your capital gains tax, if any, payable. Okay, next we're going to be speaking about deductions, everybody's favourite topic. Um, Eliza already touched on this, um, but I'll speak to you about uh, motor vehicle expenditure. So there are two methods available. Um, there's the logbook method, and then there's also the cents per kilometre method. So we'll touch on the logbook method. Um, so some of you might be looking to use this method and you haven't done so in the past. There might be some of you who have used this. Um, however, when it comes to the logbook method, you're required to keep a logbook. Now this logbook is valid for a five year period. So if you are looking to use this method moving forward, uh, you're gonna have to create a logbook. If your logbook is expired, um, it's coming up on those five years, then you're going to have to renew that logbook. Now, to do so, you're going to want to do that before the end of financial year. So that is 30 June 2021. Um, now, the other method available is the cents per kilometre method. Now, you, what you get from that is you get a, a rate of 72 cents up from 68 cents from last year, um, and you get for every kilometre driven, uh, 72 cents. So you can claim a maximum of 5,000 uh, kilometres and, and this is based on a reasonable ex estimate. So that's more of a simplified method as opposed to the logbook method. So both are available to you. Next, we'll touch on briefly laundry expenditure. So your when it comes to laundry, you're not actually required to keep receipts for expenditure up to $150. So there are some rules to that. Um, and, and these rules are, it only includes for expenditure, uh, for laundry expenditure for occupation specific clothing, protective clothing and compulsory uniform. So for somebody like myself who comes to work in a suit every day, unfortunately I can't claim any laundry or dry cleaning on uh, my suit. So. It, it would only really apply for somebody um, who have those uh, three types of clothing or uniforms as I previously just discussed. So that's laundry in a nutshell. Next is a hot topic, home office expenditure. So there are three main methods. I'm gonna be touching on two of them. Uh, the first is the COVID shortcut method. So something in regards to this is that this is now been the first year that we've We've first financial year, I should say, that we've we've gone through a whole year uh, under COVID-19. Um, and most of you would have been working from home, and so this would be definitely relevant to you. So the COVID shortcut method is 
where you can claim 80 cents per hour work from home. This is basically a, um, a quick way to calculate your home office deduction. So something to note with this method is that it covers phone, internet, uh, decline in value of equipment and furniture, electricity and gas. So if you were to be wanting to claim those expenditures separately, uh, you wouldn't be able to under this method. Now, as opposed to this method, there's, there's the actual cost method. So for all those expenditures that I just listed, phone, internet, electricity, and gas, um, with the actual cost method, you would determine the actual cost, as the name suggests, and apportion it based on work use. So there would be various methods, depending on the expenditure, um, that we, you would then apportion it based on. So those are two of the three available to you, and uh, I'm sure a lot of you will uh, be in contact with us um, to help determine which method is actually best for you. Um, however, in the interim, it's good to gather documentation such as your phone bills or your internet bills, like electricity and gas bills, or even come up with a, an estimate of how many, a reasonable estimate of how many hours you work from home. Moving on to offsets. So this is one better than a deduction. So I know a lot of you are interested in this, the low and middle income tax offset. So as per the recent budget announcements, uh, it's been extended for another year, which is fantastic. So there's, there's absolutely nothing you need to do. Um, you will receive this uh, regardless, and we will ensure that you receive it. So it is worth up to $1,080 per individual and it depends on the taxable income you've earned. So there is a threshold. So once you reach up a certain amount of income, uh, it then slowly fades out. And uh, if you're under a certain amount of income, again, it, it'll, it'll slowly fade in. So depending on where your, your income sits in the tax brackets, depending on how much you'll get of this. In summary, uh, it's now's a great time for you to start gathering your documentation, um, getting ready, especially if you're going to get be getting that refund, um, getting it all together. And, and if you have any questions for us, come speak to us. Um, and yeah, I hope you've gained some insight from this. And next speaking will be Mark Debeljack, Director at Rubik's.